as the Temple Owls meet the Penn State Nickney Lions. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee, along with former Wisconsin quarterback Randy Wright. Let's talk quarterbacks in this ball game. Temple's got a fine one. Just a junior, Henry Burris, is on the verge of setting all the passing records at his school. And I think before his career is done, he'll own every passing record. Last year against Penn State, he had an outstanding game. He's going to need that kind Correct. of game again today, 323 yards, and the key, no interceptions. And for Penn State, another quarterback who started his first game in three years, succeeding Kerry Collins as Wally Richardson. He shook off the rust of the first half against Texas. Tech a week ago and finished strong. And Richardson needs to start the way he finished the game last week. First half struggled 7 for 19, second half 11 for 12, 111 yards, and the key 4 for 4 on that game winning drive. All right, the Temple Owls with a record of 0 2 take on the Penn State Nittany Lions, the seventh ranked team in the nation with a record of 1 0. We're at Beaver Stadium, a sellout crowd will be on hand. Back with the opening kickoff coming up after these messages. You're looking at Happy Valley. Penn State University, Beaver Stadium and University Park. Wayne Larrabee and Randy Wright. Overcast skies here this afternoon as we get set for this Big Ten contest. It'll be Penn State and Temple. And we're just about set for the opening kickoff for this afternoon's game. Penn State kicks away to the Temple Owls. Last time they got together a year ago. In Philadelphia at Franklin Field, and Penn State scored a 48-21 victory. But, should be pointed out, Temple held the Nittany Lions scoreless in the first period of that game. And that you have to take into consideration the high-powered Penn State offense of a year ago. Brett Conway getting set to kick it away. Twin safeties back deep for the Temple Owls. Might be the largest crowd ever to see Temple play football. By the time they're all in here, better than 90,000 will be on hand. Conway, good high kickoff. Walker had to go through his hands through the end zone. It'll be a first down at the 20-yard line for the Temple Owls. Temple comes in with a record of 0-2 off a loss at West Virginia. Take a look at the offensive uh, setup. These are the skilled players. Juan Gaddy was injured on the first play from scrimmage in Morgantown last week. Did not play the rest of the way. He's back today. John Summerday, an All-America candidate at the center position. Temple on a first down. Burris on a delay. Fumble. Penn State appeared to have it for a moment, but uh, they are ruling now that it's going to belong to the Temple Owls. Uh, one of the first things we talked about there, Wayne, was the fact that T Temple cannot come out here and try and turn the ball over, make plays like that. They have a nice big hole. You can see Lee get the ball, puts a nice move on him, a huge hole, and as he's coming through, just drops the ball before anybody really makes contact with him. you got to hold that ball much tighter to your body in there. As it is, it turns into about an eight-yard gain. Second down and short now for Burris. Knocked down by Atkins, the defensive end for Penn State. Todd Atkins, the senior from Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And let's take this opportunity to look at the Penn State defensive line. Terry Killens played big at the defensive end spot last week against Texas Tech. Jim Nelson has a chance to become, by the time he's done here at Penn State, one of the standout linebackers of the history of the school. And Kim Herring, very strong at that safety position, directing the secondary. And I should point out, Brian Miller is an all-Big Ten candidate at the corner. Third and two now coming up for the Owls. Three receivers at the top of your screen. Motion from Walker. And penalty markers down. Apparently the uh, Owls took too much time. Well, I don't know if Burris was trying to audible at the line of scrimmage, but when you've got a, a second in view to delay a game call. John Smith heading up this crew of Big East officials. There's Ron Dickerson in his third year at Temple. Well, that's really a big mistake, Wayne. When you've got a third and two, to go up there, take your time, not get the play off for a veteran quarterback like Burris. Now he puts his team in a, a much worse situation. 
Temple woeful on third down conversions in the first two games of the season. Once again, Walker in motion. Burris had a man over the middle for a moment, but the pass a bit off the mark. Intended for Danny Davis out of the backfield. It is a fourth down, and the Owls will punt to the Nittany Lions. Last week's Temple's coaches were a little concerned that early in the game, Burris wasn't throwing the ball accurately. All of his passes were going high. That time he had Davis in a man-to-man -man coverage. He had his man beat. Burris didn't get him the ball. John Shea in punt formation. Fair catch signaled by Ingram, and he makes the catch. Penn State will take over. An excellent field position to begin this drive. Just short of their 45-yard line. A 34-yard punt by John Shea. Take a look at the Penn State offense. Mike Archie replaces Kijana Carter at the tailback spot for Penn State. He's a versatile back. Jeff Harding's an All-America candidate at the guard position. This is a veteran offensive line for Penn State. And the Nittany Lions put it in play first and 10. Football to the 45-yard line. Two receivers to the bottom of your screen. Straight eye formation. That's Archie, the tail of the tandem. Wally Richards into Mike Archie. Straight ahead move, nothing fancy here. Number two, Mike Archie, Archie out there across there. the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Lance Johnson, Johnson made the stop of the play, an all-Big East candidate at the outside linebacker spot. He truly is a very good player. He's probably the best defensive player they have. Should be a very high NFL draft pick if he continues to play this year as he has in his past. Randy, he runs a 4-3-8-40. He'll be a draft pick in the NFL. He have a generous spot of the ball out near the 50 on second down. The play action by Richardson. Pass knocked down and complete. Willie Brown got a piece of it, the outside linebacker. T. Lang Lloyd on the defensive line. This is where Temple has struggled in the trenches. Willie Brown had just knocked down that pass by Richardson. A transfer in the secondary. Robert McWilliams, the standout at safety. Willie Brown, a transfer from Alabama. Third and five now for Penn State. Down a little bit less than five. Richardson to Archie. Forced out of bounds, just short of the first down. Al Shaman Singleton, the inside linebacker, forced him out. It is fourth down, fourth and one for Penn State. That time Richardson just throwing the ball into the flat to Archie. It's the same way to, to run a sweep. You just get the ball in the back's hands on the outside. Singleton did a really nice job coming up there, forcing him out of bounds one-on-one -on -one that time. The Temple linebackers are very strong. The Penn State people very impressed with Temple's linebacking core. We'll talk about it a little bit as this game ensues. Single safety back deep now for the Temple Owls. Kevin Walker, Kania in punt formation for Penn State. Average 33 yards of punt last week against Texas Tech. Got a high snap there. Walker allows it to hit on the five. Takes a Penn State bounce. Stays in play. And the Lions down it near the nine-yard line. Brian King covered it quickly. 37-yard punt, no return. Temple will start its second offensive drive of the game deep in its own territory, scoreless in the early going at Beaver Stadium. Quarterback, Randy Wright. You're looking at Beaver Stadium, University Park, State College, Pennsylvania. Temple Owls on offense for the second time this afternoon. First down, the football just short of the 10-yard line in Temple territory. Burris has time. Good throw to Whitehead over the middle for a short gain out across the 11-yard line. Jim Nelson, the outside linebacker, made the stop. Henry Burris, the junior quarterback, we mentioned him at the top of the show here this afternoon. He's closing in on, and he has, in fact, set some all-time Temple passing records. And last year, Wayne, we mentioned at the top of the show, he had a great game against Penn State, over 300 yards passing. Those two, the, one of the three that he's had, he needs to have that kind of success here again. Second and eight. Lee. Atkins closed quickly on the play. And Penn State closed to the football. Noble also went on that stop. Brian Miller did a nice job for Penn State. Coming up here on the outside to force Lee to turn it up. As you can see Lee gets the pitch. He wants to get to the outside, but as Miller comes up, forces him inside. That's where all of Penn State's pursuit is. They're not going to let him get to the outside. They've got great team speed on defense, Penn State does. And if they can turn everything back towards the middle, they're going to get tackles for little, if any, game. Third and eight now for Burris. Burris being 
flush from the pocket by Collins. Oh, great catch and throw for a first down out across the 20-yard line. There's a penalty marker down to the backfield. Jason Collins made the stop on Kedrick Whitehead. Oh, first, that's where he is most dangerous, and that was the biggest concern that Penn State had against first. It's the holding penalty in the end, in the end zone that is really going to back them up. Whitehead makes a nice catch, would have been out by the first down, would have given them first down yardage. Now they're really going to be backed up. If you're first here, you've really got to be careful because the first thing you need to do is get to the five-yard line. It gives your punter at least enough punt to kick the ball. So they talk it over again with the Nittany Lions, and obviously they'll take the penalty because it would have been a first down on the play. Holding the call against Temple, as you see John Smith flash the indication to the press box. Wayne, one thing with a quarterback as mobile as Burrish, your offensive lineman don't always know where he is. He's not mobile. They know he's in the pocket. When he moves, a defensive lineman can see him move. Then he adjusts. An offensive lineman can grab to hold on. That's where a lot of the holding penalties come. You got a third and 18 play, coach? <laughs> <laughs> Quick kick. Ramon Lee got out to the five-yard line, as you suggested they had to do, Randy, to give their punter, John Shea, a little more room. Brad Schioli made the stop on the play. Schioli playing in the middle of the Penn State line in place of Eric Clare, who is serving a suspension for the first two games of the season for an off-field problem during the summer. Shea in punt formation averaged 40 yards over the first two games of the season. This is Ingram from the midfield market. Ingram sets up Penn State inside the Temple 35. 45-yard punt. Over to make the stop, Anthony, or rather, uh, Aaron Peterson and Keith Karen back after these words. University Park, Penn State, Temple scoreless. Penn State gets the football for the second time offensively. Bobby Ingram just returned the last punt by John Shea. One of the most prolific receivers in Penn State history. Well, he's just passed his current position coach, Kenny Jackson. You talk to Jackson, Jackson feels within a, a matter of just a few weeks, he's going to be the number one guy. You know, it's hard to believe. Bobby Ingram last year had a 1,000-yard season as a receiver. Only the first Penn State receiver in the history of the school to get 1,000 yards receiving in one year. Freddie Scott came up only 25, 30 yards short of doing that. Penn State from the 33 of Temple on a first down. Good play action by Richardson. Got Olsimer, the tight end, for a first down near the 22-yard line. Olsimer does a nice job as, as he finds the soft zone where the cushion is. He sits in the pocket. He doesn't keep running. As you can see, Richardson come out with the play pass. He looks to the outside. Whitman's covered. He comes back off of him. Olsimer sits right where the opening is, doesn't run into where coverage is. Nice play by Olsimer. Olsimer caught a key touchdown pass against Texas Tech last week on a fourth and three call. First down, Penn State. Scoreless in this first quarter. Mike Archie, big hole right side, good cutback. Touchdown, Penn State. One of the risks you play when you're Temple, if you're going to bring eight men up to the line of scrimmage, you have to make contact right at the line and stop any penetration down the field by the backs. Once Archie breaks through, there's nobody in the secondary to get him. Take a look at it from the end zone. They collapsed the line, Randy. Oh, they collapsed, and then he just put a heck of a move on Jackson right there. There was no free safety. The, the, all the defensive backs were only four or five yards off the line of scrimmage. As I said, you get good blocking up front. You only have to put one move on. There's nobody left to make the tackle. Brett Conway for the point after. Out of the hole to Jonas Stasi. Conway, whose 39-yard field goal a week ago beat hey, Texas Tech with four seconds remaining. Gives Penn State a 7-0 lead over the Temple Owls with 10.34 to go in this first quarter. Lions call on Brett Conway. Conway missed field goals of 49 and 37 last week before making the 39-yarder to win it. This, a 32-yard field goal attempt. Clean snap, good hold, and the kick is good. 
46 to go in this the first quarter. Penn State leading by 10 in Happy Valley. What we were talking about before, Penn State's defense feels that they actually won that game last week because they really did a good job of shutting down Texas Tech. And if their defense can play like they hope it does, as the offensive players that are taking over for those superstars that graduated last year, as they mature and develop, I think this team can be a good, well-balanced, solid football team. You take a look at them down the road. When they come up into the Big Ten Conference, uh, they're going to be a, a load to handle. There's no doubt about that. First down to the 29 of Temple. Short drop by Richardson. Freddie Scott. Good open field tackle by Dedrick Epps. Penn State not giving Richardson a lot to work with. He struggled last week in the first half. Coaches felt they gave him too many things to look at. They made him think too much while on the move. They really wanted to simplify a little bit as the game started. Nothing but play action passes, quick drops. That time Richardson just dropped back three steps. Hit Scott on a nice ball. Second down now for Richardson. About four yards to go. Another play action. The screen to Archie with some blocking. First down just inside the 12-yard line of Temple. Willie Brown, the strong side linebacker, forced him out. What a nice play by Richardson to set that up. The play action passes. He comes back here. He fakes the ball to Archie. Then he looks downfield towards Ingram, comes back as the rush gets to him, gets the ball out to Archie, does a nice job of setting up his blocks. Rivera right there. Does a nice job, gives Archie a little bit of room. Archie gets the most that he can. Randy, you've got to be impressed with the way Wally Richardson handles the football in the backfield. They think he's got all the tools necessary to be an outstanding quarterback. The only thing he needs is experience. Richardson wide open, Whitman, touchdown. Well, you can see when you have a strong running game, how that opens up the passing game, especially to your back. When you play action pass, as they did that time to Archie, nobody covers Whitman. He's been blocking the entire time. Watch here as Richardson goes back, play action pass to Archie. Whitman, who's been blocking, slips right into the flat. Linebacker on that side, John Stone, nowhere to be found. So Penn State extends its advantage to 16 to nothing in the final two minutes of this first quarter. Conway with the point after. And Richardson, who struggled in the first half last week against Texas Tech, this afternoon comes out hitting eight of 10 passes for 71 yards and a touchdown. He really grew up in by Shea. say the late mid to late 80s here 85 to 90 he was the assistant under paterno lots of time for richardson and he just threw that away good coverage downfield apparently by the temple owls that's the maturity that they're looking for in richardson he has to develop that last week for some things didn't have that composure back in the pocket when you're back there and everybody's covered you've got to admit as a quarterback sometimes the defense is going to win they're good players on that side of the ball when they win that play throw it away come right back you've got excellent field position come right back do it again Penn State second and ten Ingram in motion Richardson to Ingram in the flat. Follows the blocking out front by Marco Rivera. Robert McWilliams makes the stop. There is a penalty marker down on the field. I think the blocking by Marco Rivera out there wasn't quite legal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently, that is the problem, holding the call against Penn State. Penn State comes up with many different ways to try and get the ball to Ingram. The returning Bolitnikoff Award winner last year, top receiver in the country. This, just a little screen, get the ball to him, put a lineman out in front of him, and let him pick his hole. Rivera, as you can see, holding on to Brown out there. Holding offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot. Repeat the down. Well, John Smith has his voice back. It's good to hear. 
about the only thing Penn State has done that has helped Temple out. They didn't want to turn the ball over. They didn't want to make any mental mistakes. They felt if they played their best game today, Temple did not have the ability to stick with them. So far, it's been pretty error-free. The holding penalty wiped out a nine-yard gain. Now second and 11 for Penn State. Temple showing blitz up front. They back off. Pass wide of the mark, intended for Olsimer. And McWilliams had the coverage downfield. Penn State's had a lot of success running the ball early in this game. Right now, they seem to be going to a little bit of a passing game just to give Richardson some different looks. Turning around, they need to get him some experience. Turning around and handing off, even though it's working for you, Penn State can always go back to that. They've got confidence. They know they can run the ball. They're trying to give Richardson some different looks. Let him throw the ball downfield. Let him get a feel for that rush. Third and long for Penn State. Third and 11. They're two of four on third down conversion. Wide open. Chris Campbell could not hang on. He would have had a first down and a whole lot more. Penn State breaks their offense. Four wide receivers when when Temple tries to play that four deep and the linebackers go outside, look at the middle of the field here. There is nobody in the middle of the field. Richardson does a nice job of waiting until Campbell comes across the middle. Campbell looks upfield a little bit before the ball gets there, drops the ball. That could have been a really big play if Campbell just held on to it. Kania and punt formation. <laughs> Nearly muffed by Walker, who made a good play on that ball that was tailing away from him. Good leverage into that uh, punt. Good no call by the referee that time. It looked like he was thinking about calling, roughing the kicker, running into the kicker. Good no call. Apparently there has there was a flag thrown on the play. I don't know if Smith is going to pick it up or what. Let's see what he's... Smith is talking with Penn State now. Penalty is against Temple. Ron Dickerson looking on. He's somewhat concerned. Not sure what the call is. Apparently they had too many men on the field. That's one way to stop. Illegal participation. Receiving team. 15-yard penalty is assessed from the previous spot. The penalty will give the kicking team a first down. Since it took place before the ball was kicked, it's a before the possession changes, it goes back to Penn State's possession. Now they get a 15-yard penalty and a first down. A costly error for Coach Dickerson of the Temple Owls. Well, those are the kind of things you, you can't control as a coach, some of the things on the field. Those types of mistakes you can. You know, th those are just not knowing what's going on on the field for some of the players. Who's supposed to be out there, who's not? That's the kind of thing that's frustrating. And Temple has made costly mistakes. Four penalties, 35 yards against the Owls here. And apparently now, timeout being called by Temple. And the Owls will talk things over, trying to get themselves set. Penn State back on the field offensively. And Ron Dickerson and company really struggling here in Happy Valley. And early in the second quarter, trailing 17-0 and giving Penn State new life at the 28-yard line of the Owls. But Wayne, they haven't seemed to find anything yet that they can really hang their hat on. They haven't stopped Penn State running the ball right at them. They need to find something that they can really hang their hat on, have some confidence, something to give them a little momentum. Penn State leading big in the station's longest winning streak at 18 games has started strong here this afternoon. And they lead 17-0. Take a look at the numbers from the first quarter. Well, the one that jumps out at you right away, Wayne, zero first downs for Temple. Seven first downs for Penn State. You're not making any first downs. You're not moving the ball at all. A time of possession number, though, and hard to believe it's in favor of Temple in that situation. Penn State hasn't had to go very far when they've gotten the ball. Yep. They've thrown the ball. They've gotten it out of bounds. Some of those things have stopped the clock. Temple really hasn't been able to do anything. He goes, he goes, he goes. Penn State, first down near the 28-yard line of Temple. Milne, the fullback, and he is a load. First to the ball, Willie Brown. He had some help from his friends. Al Sherman Singleton was also there. Milne is one that rotates with Whitman. 
Offensive coaches, they don't really care who's carrying the ball at fullback. Between Whitman and Milne, they're both about the same. Experienced players, they bring the same thing to the team. I think with Everly being in there, an inexperienced young tailback, you'll see Milne carry the majority of the load down here. Everly, three weeks ago, was a defensive back, right? Second down. Richardson, lots of time. Ingram for the touchdown. 26 yards. Excellent protection that time for Richardson. Allowed him to hold the ball back in the pocket and gave Ingram time to run his route. Ingram runs a post route as Epps bites on the post. Ingram then breaks it out to the corner. You'll see Richardson back here with plenty of time. Ingram comes into the post, turns Epps around. Richardson has plenty of time to throw the ball, then throws a nice pass with, with very, very loose coverage that time by Epps. Ingram now three catches, 48 yards. And a touchdown. Richardson has hit 10 of 15 in the passing department. He hit his last 10 in a row against Texas Tech last week. The extra point is good by Conway. And Penn State extends the advantage to 24 to nothing. So the Nittany Lions off to a strong start as they look to extend their streak to 19 in a row. throw it away as you can see Collins in here got him whether he was trying just to throw the ball out of bounds or just try to throw it down you can't throw the ball up for grabs Aaron Collins blitzing from his outside linebacker spot you know one thing Wayne that that I was always taught when you feel you're trying to throw the ball away if you throw the ball to the right the referee is the one that always calls intentional grounding he's always looking at the quarterback to make sure the quarterback doesn't have uh, it isn't hit late or illegally. If you're going to throw it away, throw it to the right. The referee can't see that. Nelson shaken up on the play. The man who made the interception. And again, I think when you take a look at this first half for Temple, the one thing that stands out, it, it appears to be a loss of poise at, at this juncture in and this I, first half. I agree with you. I think they expected Penn State to be basic on defense, not do a lot of blitzing, not do a lot of stunning, and let Burris make his plays, but don't give up the big plays. We've seen just the opposite. Penn State has come out, they've been aggressive, they've blitzed, they've slanted, they've done a lot of different things, really taking Temple out of any kind of rhythm offense. Everly knifing through. Pick up about four or five. Talk about Shamad Singleton made the stop along with Willie Brown. Talked about Chris Everly earlier. Just three weeks ago, he was a defensive back. They moved him over because they thought he was too good an athlete not to play, and they were so banged up at the tailback position. This is good experience. Joe's got enough confidence in him to give him the ball down in the plus 20 yard line. Bill and Everly for the eye behind Richardson. Second down, Penn State. Everly again. Not a whole lot there. Vince Pellis made the stop for Temple. Gain of two to the ten, or it'll be third down and three. It's tougher to run inside the closer you get to the goal line because your linebackers take a couple steps up to the line, your defensive backs take a couple steps closer because they don't have as far to run backwards because of the end, end zone. A little tougher to run inside up here. Penn State, despite leading 24 to nothing, two of five on third downs. You think it'd be much better than that? Back as they've converted some surprise second downs into touchdowns. I'm surprised they've had five third downs. <laughs> they load up on the line. Everly. First and goal, Penn State. Inside the four of Temple. Well, we, we just talk about it being tougher to run inside because your linebackers and your defensive backs step up. This time, they run to the outside. Milne does a nice job of blowing out the outside contain. There's no cornerback up there. Everly sees nothing but grass in front of him until he gets down to the four-yard line. Everly, a small school product out of Beverly, New Jersey. I'm surprised they're giving him the ball down here with no experience. Yeah, of course, 24 to nothing 24 helps. nothing, no. <laughs> Not surprised. That's Jason Slode on the wing there. The fullback moves in motion. Everly. Tried to follow the block of his All-America guard, Jeff Hardings. Jason Davis denied on the end zone. This is the formation we saw some last week where Joe wants to put both 
fullbacks, Whitman and Milne, in the backfield. One's a little better blocker. Milne has really been the blocker for Whitman. That time, they switched it around. They let Whitman block for Milne. The big boy backfield. Whitman. Just short of the goal line. He got hit early on that play. T. Lang Lloyd and Ted McDuffie on the stop for Temple. This much maligned defensive line for Temple is making a little statement right here. It's it's hard to dig down and find that pride when you're down 24 to nothing and you've been run over like you have been by Penn State. Temple's making a little bit of a gut check right here. Once again, third down at the one. Whitman. He didn't make it. Robert McWilliams, among others, on the stop. Whitman again tacking the outside, this time though running to the left over Johnson and Rivera. Milne comes to the inside and gets his block, but Brown jumps over the pile, has enough momentum. She watched Brown coming in from your from your left side here. He comes up, knocks him back. Willie Brown made a big time play right there. Fourth down and goal to go, Penn State. Milne, touchdown. I think that's where your offensive line gets in the huddle. Penalty markers down. Excess celebration, maybe? Could be. I think this, what happens, your Penn State, your offensive line gets in the huddle. See, we've been stopped three plays in a row. This is up to us to get this last yard, and they just fired off the line of scrimmage and gave Milne plenty of room to run through. Just pride on your offensive line and having a little bit better ability. Personal foul, Penn State. The touchdown. Is good, and I would imagine they'd assess this on the opening kickoff, the uh, next kickoff. It is the uh, celebration rule. After the score, we have dead ball, personal foul, scoring team. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Apparently, uh, Milne, in the form of celebration through the football, one of his tacklers on the play. Spiked the football. The that won't go over defender. very well. No, that, that doesn't register very positively with the men in strikes. Conway for the point after, and Penn State leads 31-0 with 4.36 to go in this first half. Well, it took him four tries to get it into the end zone. So perhaps, as you mentioned, Randy Wright, a statement there by the much maligned Temple defense, but in the end, Penn State had too many orders. Penn State will kick off from the 20-yard line due to the celebration penalty, 15-yard penalty, assessed against the man who scored the, winning, the uh, touchdown at the goal line, uh, Brian Milne. Dropping back deep, and Temple hoping to get good position here. Davis on one side, Walker at the top of your screen. Take a look at the short scoring drive by Penn State. Seven runs, zero passes. Four of them coming inside the five-yard line as they got down there. Got some good yardage early. Tougher to come by towards the end of that drive. Strong kick again. Conway, it is allowed to hit by Walker. Now he picks up. Walker nowhere to go. And Temple only gets it out to the 20-yard line. Well, the Nittany Lions would take that all day. Curtis Ennis, a linebacker, true freshman, in on the stop for Penn State. And well, when it rains, it pours. Another mental mistake on Temple's part that time. Walker, not realizing that he was still quite a distance from the sideline, thought that ball was going to bounce out of bounds, as it did the previous time. Let it bounce his on the field, Penn State gets plenty of time to come down there and cover. Well, it's incumbent upon Henry Burris to settle down his team and to get something going here against this Penn State defense. Temple, yet to make a first down. They 
set up a screen. And they did not account for one tackler. Corey Carlson, the linebacker, made a big hit in the flat on the running back, Juan Getty. First does a nice job setting this screen up initially. He lets the entire rush come back to him. Now there's good separation between himself and Gaddy, but your offensive line has to pick up Carlson. They're the guys that are looking downfield. Gaddy's looking into the backfield. He can't see where Carlson is. Somebody in the offensive line has to block him. Could have been at least a decent play. He was the only Penn State tackler out in that area. Second and 11. Troy Kersey for the first Temple first down of the afternoon. One of the few plays, Wayne, we've seen Penn State stay in a basic defense. Four linemen, that was all they rushed, dropped back into the zone, no stunts, nothing up front. That time, Burris had plenty of time to sit back there. He comes back to the offensive linemen, used to seeing stunts and blitzes. This is like a break to them, nothing new going on. Burris sits back there, throws a bullet right to Kersey. Gain of 12 to the 31. Davis Malone back. Well executed play up front. Davis, plenty of running room. And he apparently has a first down on a gain of 11. Gerald Filardi made the stop for Penn State. One of the reasons we talked earlier, draws don't work with early penetration. This time, Davis goes back, sits there, Gets, his, gets the handoff from Burst. Burst goes back, gets the handoff from Davis. No early penetration. You let that draw develop. He has plenty of time to see where the holes are. Makes up, makes a good play out of it. First down from the 42. Henry Burris, the short drop. Good athlete. Burris has a first down and more. And this is one of the things Penn State feared from Burris is the fact that he can make something out of nothing, and he did just that. Chino Prater made the stop after a 26-yard gain, and as you know, Henry Burris has been a very productive runner when he's been flushed. Well, he's got a good rushing average. We just saw 5.4 yards. When you drop back three steps and you don't throw the ball, you better be ready to run because your protection is going to break down. Penn State in man-to-man -man coverage. You've got nobody designed to cover the quarterback. As Burris broke through the line of scrimmage, all of his receivers were running off to the right. We have a there was nobody on the left side. Who? First of the game. A sideline warning? Sideline warning to Penn State. And then Joe Paterno <laughs> get his kids in order. <laughs> Get them back off of the field. You get too close to the field there. Referees can't run up and down. It is a first down. Maybe they had trouble getting the chains in place as well. First down from the 33-yard line of Penn State. This is the first time Temple has penetrated into enemy territory here this afternoon. Penn State leading 31 to nothing. And you see how they're trying to get the chains put into place. I think all those players are back far enough now. They're I think gonna, so. They're not going to cross over that line. Steps up against the pressure. Davis, nice catch. Down to the five-yard line. Fine play between the quarterback, Henry Burris, and Danny Davis, the little halfback out of the backfield. When you come with a blitz, as Penn State's going to do right now, they bring the guys from the outside. Nobody's really accounting for the back. Davis slips out right here. Nobody is over there. Other than covering the other two receivers out of there, Davis makes a nice run after the catch, too. Did a nice job to find the open area. First, did a nice job picking him up. 28-yard pass play. And let's see. The officials again stop the clock with 2.16 to go in this first half. And a timeout on the field. Timeout is charged. Penn State. So the Lions want to reset things defensively, perhaps, Randy? Well, I think you've seen them stay basic early in this drive. And Temple, for the first time today, got into a little bit of a rhythm. When you get into positive territory on the plus side of the 50-yard line and a team's been moving, a defense is going to adjust. They're going to come at you. They're going to blitz. They're going to change their fronts. They're going to do things to try and take you out of that rhythm. They tried to do that right there with that blitz that they had. But Burst did a nice job escaping the sack and finding Davis for a big gain. 
did a good job handling that pressure. They haven't done that yet. It's when Penn State has switched up and gone to those blitzes that have really worked effectively against Temple. That time, Temple handled it very well. Temple, before this drive, had no first downs. They have four on this drive. And I'm sure they'll have four downs to try and get it in here. Temple now 65 yards. Penn State 191 yards of offense here this first half. First settling down a little bit. Started off a little rough. Completed several passes lately. 7 for 13. And the offensive line has done a much better job of opening holes for the running backs on this drive and protecting Burris, or at least giving him a lane to run. First and goal of the Penn State 6. That's cursing in motion. Gaddy, not a whole lot there. Barely a yard to the five. Grant Schioli made the stop. Generally, draws won't work the closer you get to the line of scrimmage because what you need when you run a draw is you need the linebackers to drop out. You can watch Nelson right here. He doesn't go anywhere. He stands right there. Schioli comes off. Collins comes over. If you're going to run a draw, you've got to let those linebackers drop way out. You're on the five-yard line. They can't drop very far. Brad Schioli, sophomore. Second down. Oh, and he drilled it to Baxter. There's a penalty marker down. I didn't see any indication. Now the indication for touchdown. What a shot thrown by Burr. Perfect pass. Take a look at it. This pass was well thrown and to some tight coverage. The touchdown. Prater had very good coverage, but Burris drops back, throws the ball on a rope, the only place it can. Hits Baxter right in the gut. Prater really had pretty good coverage, and it was such a, a quick hitting play. Prater's not even looking into the backfield. Prater has such good coverage, he had called for pass interference. Defensive pass interference, touchdown. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. <laughs> that Zane Mikulski for the point after. That ought to pump a little life into the Temple Owls. Randy, it was very important for Temple to get something going on that particular drive, and they take it all the way downfield for the score. Mikulski drills the extra point. Temple on the board, trailing 31-7, to under two minutes to go in this first half. Hey, Mikulski's extra point is good. Let's see if Temple tries an onside kick here. Why not? With a minute 36 to go in this first half, and Penn State leading 31 to 7. Talk about Curtis Enos being back in return formation. He's listed as a linebacker. Yeah. He's listed as a running back. In fact, we may see him later at a tailback position. Well, you know, he ran for over 5,000 yards and scored 71 touchdowns in high school. From Union City, Ohio. How, how good do your running backs have to be if you get somebody like that and you put them on defense? <laughs> exactly. Those running backs that are ahead of them have to be pretty darn good. And they are. Mikulski kicks it away. And this one sails through the end zone. Penn State gets it to the 20 yard line. Would have been an interesting call for an onside kick because you're already kicking from the 50-yard line if they recover it on their 40, maybe the 38-yard uh, line. You know, you're not in that much a, a delicate situation, whereas if you're trying to kick from your 40-yard line or whatever, or your 35 in this case on a typical kickoff, then the uh, onside kick might be recovered at the uh, Temple 45. Oh, I agree. Certainly would not have been any worse field position or any better than what Penn State has. I think Temple has a little bit of confidence. They made a decent stand for a couple plays down on the goal line. Defense maybe has a little confidence. Even though they did give up the touchdown, it was probably their starchest stand. And then offensively, they come right down the field and score. I think they want to try and back Penn State up here as much as they could. Archie back into the tailback spot. Made a couple of people miss. Penalty marker is down. Willie Brown makes the tackle near the 26. This is maybe what you hope for if you are Temple. You kick off deep, you give them the ball on the 20-yard line. Now they get a holding penalty on that run, and that's going to back them up a little bit farther. Worst field position Penn State has had. For Joe Paterno's team, which jumped out in front by the score of 31 to nothing in this ball game, how hard is it, Randy, to keep your edge, your concentration, the same fire you brought to the game early? Holding offense 
10 yard penalty is assessed from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. I think it is difficult, Wayne, because you play much more relaxed, which is a positive, but you don't concentrate as much because you know the game isn't relying on this play or that play. You have to be careful that when you're out there, you keep that concentration up because that's generally when injuries happen. First down and long. Mike Archie again. Out to about the 17-yard line. Where it'll be second down and about 13 yards to go. Keith Karen made the stop along with Lance Johnstone. Temple trying to call timeout. a timeout here. The Owls want another crack at it here in this first half, just 62 seconds remaining. I don't think we'll see Penn State do anything risky right here. I think we'll see them be content to try and show up as, as many yards as they can on the ground, not do anything foolish that would give Temple a, a quick touchdown or a quick opportunity to get some more points on the board. Temple has one timeout remaining here in this first half. Virginia Tech nothing. In the second quarter, Indiana 10. Don't forget, during the uh, halftime, we'll be heading back to our Big Ten studio with Mike Leeson. Get an update on the scores and highlights of all the games and around the country. And we'll, of course, have all the highlights and stats from here in Happy Valley. One thing you talked about, Wayne, with how tough is it to get your players up. I think we'll probably see, especially this being a non-conference game, see a lot of the backup players in there trying to get some valuable experience, trying to, to get them some playing time, because as the season goes on, those players are going to have to step in and perform. So I think those players will be able to keep that concentration up, be able to perform for you. Penn State football on a second down and about 13 yards to go. Football to the 17-yard line. Nittany Lion territory. Whipped in the fullback, Archie the tailback. Mike Archie hit in the backfield and down he goes. Excellent play by Tim Terry, the defensive end. He came across to make the hit on the play and that's a loss of about three yards. Just a great play by Terry that time. They're running against, away from him. There's no seal off block. He comes underneath. Temple has used a third time. He comes underneath the flow of Penn State linebackers, or Penn State offensive linemen, and nobody blocks him. Nobody picks him up at all. Gets into that backfield, make a sack for, for negative yardage. Or tackle, not a, not a sack, but still negative yardage play. Third down now for Penn State, and about 16 yards to go. Ron Dickerson, I think you're right, Randy. His team, on the last Penn State score, forced the Nittany Lions in a short yardage goal to go situation inside the five yard line it took the lions four cracks to get it over and they finally did on a one yard run by brian milne but that may have sent a message in this ball game that temple despite being erratic in this first half and maybe losing its poise at one point was not going to go away quietly and then on the next drive temple took over and motored for its first score of the game well that was the first thing temple had done as a unit that they could really be proud of they actually stopped him on three of those four plays deep inside their own territory. Well, I think she's enjoying this game. If not the game, certainly the refreshments. <laughs> Third down for Penn State. Scott in motion. Archie on a sweep. Short of the first down. Robert McWilliams through the convoy of blockers to make the stop, but there is a flag down on the play. I think we're going to have another holding penalty, which is going to continue to march Penn State backwards. That's the second time in this drive where they picked up excellent yardage on first down and have to move backwards. I wonder if Temple would turn this down. 48 seconds to go. It would be fourth down for Penn State. They've got no timeouts left. First. The 10-yard penalty is assessed from the spot of the foul. Replay third down. Obviously, they will take the penalty because it would back you know, Penn State all the way back to the one-yard line. But, you know, I was thinking in terms of a time situation, Randy, 
and then you allow Penn State to run another play, you can't stop the clock. I agree, and they're hoping maybe to get in a position where they can block the punt. They do have one block punt already. They hold them here. They're at least going to have to punt the ball on fourth down, maybe hoping to go after the block punt. The official first place, the ball down to the one. He's got it now at the six-yard line. Third down and a whole bunch. Mike Archie getting a workout here and not going very far. Good penetration by T. Lang Lloyd on the stop. No surprise that Penn State kept the ball on the ground. Richardson did a nice job of letting that 25 second clock run down below the game clock. They wouldn't have to run another play right now. I agree with you. I think they should have not taken that penalty. Forced Penn State to kick. Forced a punt. Maybe gotten one more play off after that. First half comes to a close. Here in Happy Valley. The end of the first half, the score. Penn State 31, Temple 7. We'll be back to Beaver Stadium after these messages. Numbers in the first half. The yardage number jumps out at you. It shows the dominance in this ball game by uh, Penn State. Time of possession is misleading. Penn State scored on some short drives, and they scored quickly for the most part in the first half of play, except for their last touchdown drive. Penn State will receive the opening kickoff of the second half. Zane Mikulski getting ready to boot it away. Twin safeties back deep for Penn State. Campbell on the bottom of your screen there. And at the top, of course, was the linebacker slash running back, Curtis Enos. This is Campbell. He had quite a wedge to follow. Aaron Patterson came from behind to make the hit. First down for Penn State. Football across their 25 of the 27-yard line. Penn State enjoyed excellent field position to start its drives in the first half, Randy. And this is one of the uh, deeper uh, starts for the Nittany Lions. And they're back in deep in their own territory. Once they took advantage of that field position in the first half, it didn't matter as the half wore on where they took over. They'd already done the damage. Milne and Everly, the running back tandem. Richardson, slant pattern. Ingram to the 40 for a first down on a gain of 12. McDuffie made the stop. Penn State showing no signs of going conservative at halftime. Come out with a little play action. Richardson does a real nice job spinning himself around and throwing. We see Ingram, who's already had some success today, building on last year's stats. We talked about the 1,000-yard receiver, the first one ever for Penn State last year. Ingram last week, seven catches, 106 yards, all in the second hand. Everly. the football and let's see who's got it. I believe the Nittany Lions got it back. Everly following his blocking all the way inside the 45 of Temple. It will be Penn State ball. 18 yard gain. Nice run by Everly. We get a chance to see him break through. Shows his acceleration. Just a wide pitch. Comes through. Good blocking by Olsemer. You see Everly puts on a nice move on McDuffie. When he runs into traffic, down, doesn't tuck the ball away. Fortunate for Penn State. Good run. Got to hold on to the ball. Everly got the ball back himself. Freddie Scott in motion on first down. Everly again following Marco Rivera this time. To the 38-yard line of Temple. Singles in on the stop along with Willie Brown. And there's a look at Brown. Transferred to Temple. For his final year of eligibility from Alabama, he was on a team at Alabama that won a national championship. His Alabama teams in his first three years won 33 games. Temple has won 32 games in its last 10 years of football. Amazing. Second down. Richardson. Milne, the big guy. For a first down at the 31. McDuffie made the stop. Just to finish up a little bit on Willie Brown, Randy. There's a situation where a guy comes into a program, and Willie Brown 
made a nice impact on this program. He brings with him a national championship ring. And believe me, the players down on the field, they realize what it's all about. And he had to shake some people up, uh, he was saying, that to get them on track. To, hey, this is what you've got to do to be a national program, to be a big time. He brings that winning attitude that some of the players at Temple haven't had before. Everly, a good job of keeping his feet, and he's close to the first down. McWilliams got up late on that play. He and Johnstone on the stop. Everly does a nice job. He's got a huge hole to run through. Milne does a nice job blocking right there. Everly does a good job keeping his feet. What I liked about Everly on that run was where he saw the hole open up, he turned and accelerated through it. He didn't try and stretch it to the outside, try and make something that maybe wasn't there. He saw the hole. He really, Wayne, looks like he's got the acceleration to get through that hole quickly. You know, at Penn State here, and they're short of the first down, when they say we're a little thin, they're not thin in the talent department. They may be a little thin in some spots in experience, but that's about it. <laughs> they're, they're thin by Penn State standards. Yeah, I that guess is you're right. not necessarily NCAA standards <laughs> <laughs> or even Big Ten standards. There are a lot of schools that would like to have uh, Chris Everly. There are a lot of schools that would like to figure out if number 39, Curtis Enos, is a linebacker or a running back because he could be pretty good at either spot. It, it may depend on the situation. Second and short for Richardson. Mill. And he's got the first down to the 19-yard line of Temple. Early going third quarter here at Beaver Stadium. I think we're going to see Penn State try and get the ball, as we've talked so far, to the players who they really need to see how they're going to react under pressure. Everly is a guy that's going to have to help them until they get some of their other tailbacks healthy and back on the team. They're going to have to count on him as the season goes on. They're going to try and give him the ball in some pressure situations, and this is as good as any. Everly again. Got by Lloyd and picks up about two or three yards on the play. T. Lang Lloyd got a piece of him in the backfield to slow him up. Pellis had a chance to get in there too and get, uh, get a tackle, even though he didn't get credited with a tackle. Did a nice job of tangling him up, break, taking him off of his rhythm. As you can see, Everly now comes through. Pellis, just enough of a contact to throw him off of his rhythm, allow the rest of the team to get there and make the tackle. Second down for Penn State. Good play action fake. Richardson hit. Make it for play. First and goal at the Temple Four. Nice play by Richardson on the bootleg, seeing nobody was open and having plenty of room to run the ball. Wiser decided to run it, pick up the yard she would have gotten rather than forcing a pass. Watch this block by Olsimer. When Olsimer coming across as your tight end, sees that Richardson decides to run, he peels right back off, throws a nice block that time on Brown. Almost a clip. 14-yard gain on the play, and Penn State again at the doorstep of the Temple Owls. The big boy backfield. Milne and Whitman slowed on the wing. They're slowed in motion. Again, the fake on play action. Richardson wide open in the end zone. Stevenson for the touchdown. Similar to the play Penn State ran last week. He's on the board against Texas Tech. Little play action down on the goal line. They've been running the ball very well. Those linebackers step up, just trying to slip a tight end right out there. Stevenson did a nice job finding the open area and then throttling down, not running himself into coverage because he also had Olsmer over there in the corner. Bob Stevenson, a sophomore from Waynesburg, Pennsylvania, was one of the standouts this spring in the spring drills for Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions. Now you get the feeling, Wayne, it doesn't matter who's playing at those positions. They just continue to produce. Kind of the reload theory you're thinking. Conway on the point after. 38 to 7 Penn State. Richardson doing a nice job right after the fake, turning and get his, getting his head around. As his man in the corner, Olsomer is covered, comes right off of him, finds Stevenson wide open. So the Nittany Lions continue impressive in this, their second ball game of the season, leading 38 to 7.
those three bears. Right. The daddy one, the mommy one, and the baby one. Uh-huh. And then Goldilocks found some porridge. Right. The daddy one was too hot. The baby one was just, just white. And it... Don't move your lips, Daddy. Okay. And then go to lunch. Walk up and... Uh-oh, the end. The heat is on. During the Mercury Clearance Countdown, your Lincoln Mercury dealers are committed to doing whatever it takes, turning up the heat to beat any competitor's deal. Mercury Sable starts with over $3,200 in savings, including $2,000 cash back and more than $1,200 in option package savings. Then, your Lincoln Mercury dealer adds huge dealer discounts for unbelievable year-end savings. The selection's great, but not for long, because the heat is at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. Penn State leading Temple big here early in the third quarter. The Owls getting set to receive a kickoff from the Nittany Lions. Penn State scoring drive to open the second half. Very impressive. They opened up that drive with a little quick hitting slant to Ingram almost to set the tone to keep Temple saying, hey, we're not going to come out and just run the ball. We're going to let you know we're willing to throw it also. Other than that, there's a lot of runs. Fred Conway getting set to restart the game. Davis on the right side of your screen as you look at it, and Walker on the left, back deep. Overcast, kind of cool afternoon here at Penn State. Conway hit the back pylon of the end zone. <laughs> That's a pretty good shot. Pretty accurate. The old unreturnable. Yes, indeed. So it'll be first down for Temple at the 20-yard line. Now, can he do it if he's aiming for it? Yeah, well, exactly. Can he do it if he tries? That's the big question. This is the sixth time the Temple has started at their 20-yard line. It's Van Johnson to the top of your screen. Walker to the bottom. Ramon Lee is the tailback in this offense. That's Green in motion. Burris over the middle to Corey Green. First down just across the 30-yard line and a gain of about 11 yards. Jim Nelson made the stop for Penn State along with Gerald Filardi. First did a nice job of giving Green time to drop underneath the linebackers. As he drops back, he's looking downfield. He doesn't rush his throw. He takes his time, lets Green come underneath the linebackers across the ball. Even though it doesn't look like a huge gain, turns out to be a first down. Screens it out. Nobody there. Well, Van Johnson was there, but he was underneath the coverage, and a ton of coverage it was in the flat. Penn State had a good coverage call for that play. They came with a heavy rush, man-to-man -man coverage. They had Mark Tate standing right out there on Johnson. It's a good thing for Johnson that Burst threw that ball away because Tate was right there. Second and ten for Burris and company. Unlike last year, Burris has struggled here in this game today. The junior from Spyro, Oklahoma. Quick hitter up the middle. That's Davis on the carry. For short yardage, Todd Atkins made the stop. Defensively, Penn State looks as though they're not doing as much early as they did in the first half. A lot of stunts, a lot of different blitzes, those kinds of things. They look much more stable, which is what Temple thought they were going to be to start the game. Lions have been very good defensively on third downs here today. Temple 0 for 7 on third down conversions. Third down right here. Third and 7. Pressure immediately. Burris trying to make a play. Davis, the intended receiver. It is fourth down for the Temple Owls. Filardi had the coverage downfield. Terry Killens came right up the gut and rushed the quarterback out of the pocket. Well, when you can get early pressure like that, when Burris doesn't want to scramble out, Killens comes right up the middle. You, you eliminate half the field. Burris comes to this side. He realizes there's no way he can go back to the other half, so half of his receivers are gone. Throws his reads totally out of sync. 
He's just trying to get rid of the ball and avoid the sack. Bobby Ingram makes the catch. And it'll be first down, Penn State. Near the 38-yard line in Nittany Lion territory, 29-yard punt by John Shea. Let's go back to the studio. And Mike Gleason. Play Northwestern's aerial attack striking again. The Steve Schnur goes up top. This one goes for 38 yards to Dwayne Bates. The second one for Bates on the afternoon. The first one went for 29 yards. Wildcats lead 17-0 in the second. Let's head back to a State College, Pennsylvania. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Penn State on the move. Boy, Curtis Enos getting the call there. Robert McWilliams on the stop. Well, we got the first half of our question answered. Is he going to play linebacker or is he going to play tailback? Again, just a pitch. He does a nice job of setting it up as though he's going to the outside. Once the blocks go outside, he quickly cuts it up, picks up some real positive yardage. And again, he's only been at linebacker now for the last three weeks. You've got to have a lot of speed to run that kind of play because you have to give the threat to going outside. If there's no threat, you're going outside, they're not going to tell you. Speed and power, and Enos inside Temple territory. Basically the same play. This one being a handoff, a little slower to develop because it's a handoff. Gives him a little more time to pick his hole. He could have picked one of three that time because there are huge holes. Again, you got to be impressed with the way some of these younger backs, Everly and Enos, who don't have a lot of experience carrying the ball at this level, are hitting that hole with quick acceleration. There he goes again. Enos this time into heavy traffic of the bit portion of the Temple defense. Gain of about three yards to the 36. Vince Pettis, the nose tackle, made the stop on the plays. A freshman from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. A true freshman. You also have to be comfortable with those backs running the ball in the middle. They know they've got speed, Everly and Enos, but how are they going to handle contact? How are they going to handle the pounding? We're seeing them carried inside. We're also seeing them carried outside. Everly is the tailback now on second down and seven for Richardson. Ingram out of bounds with the first down of the 24-yard line. What a beautiful throw that time by Richardson. Ingram really ran his man off when his defensive back, Jackson, thought he was going deep. Ingram breaks and come back. Richardson here, a little play action. Holds the ball as Ingram is waiting to come back. Then he sees the throws a rope right there to him. Jackson, respecting Ingram's speed, too far off to recover. Gain of 12. Ingram now five catches, 73 yards. See how long Richardson had to hold that ball back there in the pocket. Plenty of time. Enos. To the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. 24 yards. My goodness. Curtis Enos, the outside linebacker from Union City, Ohio. 71 touchdowns in high school. His first. Well, you, on the major college level. Your defensive back, Epps, has got to come up and force this play. He's being run off in man-to-man -man coverage. By the time he realizes that it's the run, Enos is already right on top of it. There was nobody out there to support. Enos had easy running all the way to the corner. Well, a moment that young man will remember whether he stays at running back or moves back to linebacker. Conway with the point after. And Penn State has scored on its first two possessions of the second half. Nine minutes to go in the third period. The Nittany Lions enjoy a 45-7 lead over the Temple Owls. We'll return to Beaver Stadium at University Park after these messages. So the Nittany Lions and the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. It's a break, Joe. Yeah, I know. It ties too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how do you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. 
word is out. Freeze! Hackers is an experience you'll never forget. Never send a boy to do a woman's job. An extraordinary, stunning spectacle. Oh, Highly entertaining. A must-see. I win. You wear a dress on our date. And if I win, so do you. Without a doubt, Hackers is the coolest way to start the fall. You're not good enough to be us. Yeah, maybe I'm not. But we are. Hackers, rated PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. You hear the thunder, the call of the road. Now hear this. Pontiac's 95 closeout values are loud and clear. Get $1,000 cash back or 5.9% financing on new 95 Grand Ams. Get on your Pontiac and ride. Pontiac and ride. Or get $1,000 cash back on remaining new full-size Bonnevilles. Limited time offers, so hurry. Get on your Pontiac. Closeout time is here. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, back at Beaver Stadium. Penn State leading 45-7 to over Temple. Let's go back to our studio. Mike Gleason with an update on the Iowa-Iowa State game. Mike? Wayne, the Hawkeyes have regained the lead on Iowa State. Iowa's Rodney Filer bangs it in from two yards out. Hawkeyes go up in the second, 12-10. to But Iowa has missed both extra points. Wayne? All right, Mike, that may play a role down the stretch. Iowa missing a couple of extra points in that interstate rivalry. Iowa and Iowa State and Ames, Iowa. Fred Conway kicking off once again. Good leverage into this kick. Walker about three yards deep. Kevin Walker. Offended short of the 20-yard line. Kim Herring led the charge. That'll be first down for the Temple Owls. There's a look at the Penn State scoring drive again. A very short time of possession on that drive. Well, when you have so many yards being gained at one time, you don't have to run a lot of plays, and it doesn't take a lot of time. We're talking with Jerry Sandusky, the defensive coordinator of this Penn State team, asking him about his defense last year. He said one of the problems we had was that we were not we were on the field too much. Our offense scored so quickly. Lee looking for running room. And he found about four yards out to the 22. Mark Tate tracked him down. He made all of that on his own. Nothing up the middle. He just breaks to the outside. The contain breaks down for Penn State, thinking maybe Lee was stopped at the initial point of contact. Lee at least made something out of nothing and put his team in a second and six. Lee just nine yards on seven rushes here this afternoon. After a big day a week ago, 73 yards on 23 carries in Morgantown. Second and six. Henry Burris from behind, hit by Atkins. Well, the official was in the vicinity, <laughs> but he wasn't eligible to catch that pass. You're just not supposed to put this much pressure on a quarterback with no blitz. Spoken no like a stunts. true quarterback, I might add. Yeah, <laughs> good point. But the lineman up front, you see Atkins on the left side coming through there. He is disrupting Burris' rhythm before anything can take place downfield. It's almost a foot race to the pocket. Who's going to get there quicker? Todd Atkins, the young man out of Newcastle, Pennsylvania, has had a good day in the defensive line. Third down. Temple 0 for 7 and third down. Burris under pressure. Lamont Lee needed to make six or seven moves to get by the three defenders who had him hemmed in, led by Aaron Collins. His brother Jason was also there. And Brad Johnson in on that stop as well. Rightfully so, Wayne, when Burris drops back to pass, he's got no confidence that he's going to have any protection. He's almost looking to scramble right as he sees it break down, then just tries to find anybody to throw the ball to with an eligible number. Eighth punt of the day, and a fair catch made. Penalty marker thrown late. Chuck Penzenic on the fair catch for Penn State. About a 25 yards. There's the arbiter and the announcer. Pass, make that interference with the punt return. The fair catch signal had been made by Penn Zenick. You have to give him room on the return. You've got to give him at least, what, three to five yards. A couple of yards. But five yards. Interference with fair catch. Assessing the end of the kick. First down. What's tough on a play like that is it's such a short punt that your cover team running down expects it to be deeper 
and all of a sudden the return man is coming up at you full speed, you can't stop in time. So Penn State takes over again in Temple territory, the 44-yard line. This is their fourth start of a drive inside enemy territory this afternoon. Freddie Scott's at the top of your screen. Juravicious at the bottom. Richardson, the short drop. Oh, nice fingertip catch by Juravicious, and they say incomplete. Robert McWilliams had the coverage. Juravicious said, hey, I had that on my tips. Willie Brown did a nice job here for Temple. He recognizes the play early as Richardson turns and makes his play action. Brown turns and runs right there, gets in the passing lane, forces Richardson to throw the ball too far in front. Good recognition <laughs> by Brown. And a good call by the Big East officiated crew. He did not have possession when he hit the ground. Boy, but he sold it well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Enos following his blocking patiently. Penalty markers are down as Enos goes down to the 40-yard line after a gain of four. If you were Juravicius and you're playing behind Ingram, you're going to try and sell every opportunity you get because there aren't going to be many of them coming your way. Holding the call against Penn State. We've had about three holding calls on running plays here this afternoon. Joe doesn't agree with that. Not sure he doesn't agree with the call. He just <laughs> doesn't he like the fact his team committed the error. With why it happened. Now that's a very, very veteran offensive line, mm -hmm. too. Four returning starters from last year, all seniors. Ferry Tills, the junior, stepping in there. It's a lot easier to step in as a first-year starter when you've got an All-American, all Jeff Hardings, playing to your right guard position. Holding offense, the 10-yard penalty is assessed from the end of the run. Repeat second down. So Penn State will have it at its 49-yard line. Seven penalties against Penn State. That's something uh, that Joe Paterno will spend some time in the film study tomorrow with these Nittany Lions. Talk about Hardings. Richardson is not a real vocal leader from the quarterback position. Hardings, Whitman, those are the guys that really provide that leadership that maybe the quarterback doesn't from a vocal jump-around aspect. Play action to Eberle. Richardson on second and long. Juravicious, the reception inside to the 35, and he's got a first down near the 33-yard line. Alan Jackson had the coverage and the stop. Juravicious, a big receiver, 6'5", 223 pounds, makes for a huge target coming across the middle. When you've got no pressure up front, the linebackers are frozen by the play action. Richardson can stand back there. Juravicius does a nice job coming straight across the middle instead of leaning that upfield. 18-yard gain. Quick hitter up the middle. And the Nittany Lions close to a first down on a gain of about eight yards. Lance Johnstone made the stop on the play. See Brown coming off here, limping a little bit. One of the bright spots of this Temple defense had been the linebackers coming into the game. We spoke about Brown being a transfer from Alabama, and not only did he bring that ability to Temple, but that attitude that is taught from that Alabama program. Second down and short for Penn State. Juravicious, good move. Smelling end zone, penalty markers are down. Juravicious down inside the five. Lance Johnstone, touchdown saving tackle. Well, don't let the penalty take away from the outstanding individual effort that Juravicius made. Just a little screen pass out to the right, just designed to be a, a, a quick hit or maybe a five or six yard gain. He breaks the tackles, keeps his balance, does a nice job of getting the ball down to what would have been around the four or five yard line. You saw the clipping call against Penn State. This will back up the play. A little over six minutes to go, third period. Penn State leading 45 to 7. Let's see if we can pick up the infraction. Here's the call. Going the run, clipping offense. 15 well, yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second down. You see the clip down there by Stevenson. Didn't really have much of an effect. I mean, Juravicius was, was by him. Almost if you're going to clip, you got to make it a good, solid clip. Really didn't have much of an effect there on McWilliams. Make the clip count. Make the clip spring the play, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> if you're going to do it. Second down. 
Dervis is wide open in the secondary. McWilliams chased him out. First and goal inside the 10 of the 8-yard line of Temple. 14-yard play. The speed that these Penn State receivers have has really got this Temple defensive secondary scared of getting beat so deep. They're giving up so much cushion. You're not supposed to be this wide open. Pure vicious as he makes his break back to the corner, wide open. You're supposed to be able to close quicker when you're that deep into your own end zone. McWilliams has to come up and close quicker. First and goal to the eight. Eberly. Working hard down to the one-yard line. Lance Johnstone again made the stop. He's the all-Big East candidate linebacker for this Temple Ball Club. Johnstone had 17 tackles opening day at Kansas State. Recovered a fumble last week and had 12 tackles in Morgantown against West Virginia. Penn State, they just keep coming at you, don't they? Throwing the ball to different receivers, tight ends. You've had a four of running backs carrying the ball and it, it really does not make any difference that offensive line just keeps blowing off the ball the officials hold up the play here timeout temple so the temple owls will talk it over the big boy backfield is in there is ron dickerson you know he was telling us last night when he took over this temple program three years ago he took over a program that was rock bottom in terms of division 1a football he had 91 players. He interviewed each one. He looked into each player's eye in his private interview with each player. And he said, are you any good? Seriously, he said, are you any good? Seven of the 91 players had the confidence to say, yes, I am, coach. And three of them lied. <laughs> he found out that maybe he didn't have seven good ones. Well, I'll tell you, that it shows you how far Dickerson has had to go with this program. And he's got a ways to go now. And it's unfortunate that their schedule, the second toughest in Division I football this year, has just four home games and started at Kansas State, went to Morgantown, and then here to Happy Valley. This is what remains of the Temple schedule. They'll have a week off next week, then Bowling Green at home, then on the road to the Carrier Dome, Pittsburgh at home, East Carolina at Miami, and then Boston College, Virginia Tech, and Rutgers to finish it up. You look at that, Wayne, and even though their team may be improved over the last couple of years, it's tough to say here because Penn State is such a dominant team. There aren't a lot of easy games left on that schedule. It may be hard to show people, yeah, we're improved, but where are the results on the field? Gary Barnett was in the same situation at Northwestern until three weeks ago when they sprung the upset at Notre Dame. Big boy backfield for Penn State. Richardson on second and goal. Milne followed the pack off the right side of the line for the touchdown. Not much imagination in that play. Milne keeping both hands on the ball, making sure not to fumble. Just following his offensive line again. Hardings, Conlon, Tilsch. Great, great explosion by the offensive line. They block everything down. Hardings comes around, clears out the alley. Hardings and Whitman. Head. And he went right over their backs to the end zone. You better get out of the way. You got those guys coming over your backs. Not a bad escort. Got a new kicker in for Penn State. And the kick is up and it is good by Mark Barninger. Mike Barninger taking over for Brent Conway. Puts his first extra point of the season on the board. Penn State leading big. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something, too. My Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. You're not attending a rehearsal dinner. Not starting a new job tomorrow. There's no reunion meeting his parents. The point is, there is no point. And maybe that's what makes this such a special occasion. 
Bravo, because life won't wait. Use the Bravo card where you see the Nova sign. Three touchdowns in a matter of six minutes and 30 seconds here in the outset of the third quarter for Penn State. And the Nittany Lions rolling big, 52-7 to over Temple. They say, when you improve the most between your first and second game. And I think Joe Paterno's evaluation of his team last week versus how it would play this week was very accurate. He thought they'd come out and play very well. He didn't know how good Temple was, but he has a pretty good idea how good he is right now. We mentioned at the top of the show as Conway kicks it through the end zone that Joe Paterno felt after last week's game that that close victory coming with just four seconds left on a field goal by Brett Conway to beat Texas Tech, that that would have an impact on his football team and make his team a better football team. He said, hey, listen, he told us last night, he said, we're better today than we were a week ago at this time. Now, does that mean we're going to win tomorrow? I don't know. I think he had a pretty good idea. He'd win. I think, I think you're right. I think he had a pretty good idea, and they're about to extend this longest winning streak to 19 games. Henry Burris, the junior quarterback from Spyro, Oklahoma. On first down, play action. Well done. Great catch by Baxter. Fine throw and catch down to the Penn State 46-yard line. Mark Tate, good coverage. He was all over him. Beautiful throw by Burris that time. Baxter does a nice job back here as, you, as we go to Burris, dropping back deeper, hiding the ball, does a good job of throwing the ball well in front of Baxter so that Baxter can continue to run and get away from Tate. That ball's underthrown at all. Tate runs up his back, knocks the ball down. Burst did a nice job, giving him plenty of room, letting him run to it. 34-yard pass play. Ramon Lee has had very little running room here this afternoon. Brandon Noble, Anthony Cleary on the stop along with Gerald Filardi. Let's go back to the studios now. Mike Gleason for an update on Indiana, Kentucky. Hey, guys, Kentucky fans on the edge of their seats to check out Billy Jack Haskins. 42 yards reminiscent of Randy Wright in his Badger days. Huh? Kentucky now leading Indiana 14 to 10. Let's go back to State College, Pennsylvania. 14! About the only comparison there is we both played Indiana. <laughs> Burris. Wide open, Troy Kersey tight roping the sidelines to the 18-yard line of Penn State. Chino Prater and Kim Herring escorted him to the chalk marks. There's the Henry Burris that Temple was looking forward to seeing all day today. Penn State's done a nice job of shutting him down. This time as Burris scrambles, sometimes you scramble to buy time. Sometimes you scramble just to look where you can get rid of the ball. Burris, this time as he scrambles, keeps his eyes downfield, finds Kersey that does a nice job coming across the field with Burris, knowing Burris can't look all the way back to his left, finds the open area. Nice play that time by Kersey and Burris. 24-yard pass play. First down, Kersey in motion. Temple on the drive. Davis struggling forward. He was met in the hole by Blue Jerseys. And I'm telling you, they were led by Chris Snyder, a defensive end, getting some action, along with Aaron Collins, the linebacker. That kind of play, Wayne, it's either open right away or not at all. A very quick-hitting trap play. You're counting on penetration from Penn State's defensive front. If it's not there, you don't have enough time as a lineman to open up the hole. Generally a big gainer or no gain. This is a pretty decent-sized Temple offensive line, Randy. And, you know, I would think they'd do a little more zone blocking here and move some people out of the way. Penn State very talented up front. Burris under pressure. He's got a chance to make a play himself. Burris to the end zone for the touchdown. Good job. Good job. Bellardi missed him. Looks like Filardi missed him down by the goal line, and Nelson misses him in the backfield. Even though Nelson has somebody in his face, he's got a chance to get burst as he drops back, feels the pressure coming from the outside. Right there, Nelson had a chance to at least stop him from moving forward. He doesn't. Burst does a nice job of making Filardi miss, then just tiptoes into the end zone over Herring. Several missed tackles on that play right there, and credit Burst with just excellent individual efforts. 
18 yard running play by Burris to put Temple back on the board. Mikulski's extra point is good. So it is Penn State 52 and Temple 14 and Henry Burris, although it's a little late, having an impact on this game. Well, you can't say enough about just the individual effort that he had right there. Temple fans are used to seeing him perform like this. It's always pleasurable to watch a guy just excel athletically. He's got the presence of mind to pump the ball. Now he tucks it down, coming carrying a little loosely, <laughs> but yet nobody locks, knocks it out of his hands and he keeps control of it. That step that he made right over Herring, the free safety that comes flying up and goes at him low to try and knock him out of bounds. He steps right over him, continues his jaunt into the end zone. A competitor never quits regardless of the score. Matter of fact, if you're a great competitor, you often don't know the score in a situation like this. Both Temple drives have covered 80 yards. It has not been easy when they have scored for Ron Dickerson and company. One of the bright spots for Ron Dickerson as you just watched that Henry Burris touchdown. It's only a junior. He will be back. And one thing about this Temple team, even though they do have several juniors and seniors that are playing for them, they've all got a lot of experience because they've been playing for two or three years, ever since Dickerson got there. Mikulski's kickoff. Dennis at the nine. Into the clear for a moment. And he may have gone all the way. Mikulski was the only man back if he didn't get by Kobe Barnett. 26 yard return. I just feel in this crowd, there's an excitement whenever he's carrying the ball. They're excited to watch him run, what he can do. Just feel that excitement out there. Mike McQuarrie reports on a quarterback for Penn State. He's a sophomore out of State College, Pennsylvania. First down, Mitley Lions, just short of their 35. Everly. Good move off the blocking on the right side of the offensive line. John Swift made the stop on the play. Giving McQuarrie a little time in here to feel the game. Probably not going to throw the ball an awful lot, but give him a little game time action. Big kid, 6'4", 213 pounds. He's a junior eligibility. I think he's only a sophomore eligibility-wise. He's a junior in class. He's got a couple years remaining after this. McQuarrie. Not the best of passes, but he got the job done on the completion for the first down. Singleton made the stop on the play. Carl Gray, a fullback on the reception. Well, as I said, they're not going to throw the ball. They'll let him turn around and hand off. McQuarrie comes right back, <laughs> throws a nice little out route to his fullback coming out of the backfield. Oh, was a good pass. You got a good feel for this game, Coach. Hey, <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's just fun to be here to watch a major college game like this. That's what makes a great coach. Break your tendencies. Two yes. things you're not supposed to do. Absolutely. Enos again this time. The play well snuffed out there. Penalty markers down on the play. Enos had nowhere to go. Might have a hold on the uh, fullback, Carl Gray. Aaron Patterson made the stop for Temple. Nice stick by Patterson. You could hear that all the way up here in the sure press good. box. And again, this is a crew of Big East officials for this game here. It's a penalty is against Penn State. It's one thing, again, the Nittany Lions have had a lot of penalties here in this ball game today. Holding offense. Ten yards from the spot. We played it out. One thing in talking to Penn State coaches yesterday, they were a little worried about their depth. They said they wanted to substitute if the game got out of hand, but they weren't going to do wholesale changes, units for units. They'd stick a couple players in here, a couple other players in there, keep some of that leadership, that experienced leadership on the field. First down and long. Nine penalties now against Penn State. McQuarrie. Oh, good. Reaction by Terravicius on the adjustment. He's got a first down inside the 40. Near the 37-yard line of Temple. McWilliams and Patterson were there. But Terravicius knifed his way in between the defenders to make the reception. When McQuarrie threw the ball, I didn't think there was any way Terravicius was going to be able to catch that. He comes out here, 
little bootleg that Penn State has run successfully today. He throws the ball early. Jervicius does a nice job coming back, making the catch, keeping his concentration on the ball right over Patterson's back before McWilliams can get there. For a 27-yard gain. Venus makes one man miss. Now he's got some real estate. Out of bounds at the 12-yard line. McWilliams chased him out. If you're Marcus Counts, the strong safety for Temple, if you're going to come up and gamble on the sweep and force the run to turn inside, you got to make sure that you get the play. That time, he gets blocked down. There's nobody on contain. He just runs to the outside. We talked about Penn State's quick score ability. You see Enos head to the line, to, to the sideline. The last two plays by Penn State, 27 yards through the air to Jurevicius, 25 yards on the ground by Enos. And now they're in scoring range at the 12 and first down. Everly has a hole off the right side, and he is stacked up by John Swift, the outside linebacker. Swift, a redshirt sophomore. Well, you may look at Joe Paterno and Penn State and wonder why they're continuing to move the ball down the field. He may be trying just to run the clock out, maybe trying to move the clock, but when you're picking up huge chunks of yardage on every play, not a lot you can do about that. Your backs are breaking off 15, 20, 25 yard runs. Can't tell them to take a knee. <laughs> not hardly. That's not what you want to teach. Everly's on the wing now. McQuarrie, lots of time. Pulled down from behind by Andy number Phillips. Nine, it will leave a third down for Penn State nine, inside nine, the 10 yard line of Temple. Looked like McQuarrie had enough time to throw the ball. If it was not open quickly on a five step drop, if we see McQuarrie drop back right here, you got to throw the ball or throw it away. If you try and step up, the pocket's going to collapse. When you're down that deep into the scoring zone, generally you don't want your quarterback running with the ball because it closes too quickly. Not open right away, throw the ball in the stand. Speaking of close, we close out the third quarter. The end of the third period of the score, Penn State 52, Temple 14, back with a fourth after these words. Has the popularity of NASCAR racing left you wondering what's all the excitement about? It's the third of power! If you're curious about racing, you need the NASCAR Handbook, a video guide to Winston Cup. This easy-to-understand home video explains everything you need to know to enjoy America's favorite sport. To order, just send $14.98 plus $4 handling to the address on the screen or call toll-free 1-800-764-5441. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Waiting for the ultimate chicken finger food? Try new Colonel's Crispy Strips from KFC. Juicy, all-white meat chicken, freshly prepared with our special extra tasty crispy recipe. New Colonel's Crispy Strips are good enough to be a meal, so eat them with a knife and fork, if you can wait that long. Everybody needs a little KFC. And for a mealtime treat, bring home three Colonel's Crispy Strips, mashed potatoes and gravy, coleslaw and a biscuit, all for just $2.99. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, back at Beaver Stadium. Penn State leading at the end of three, 52 to 14. And the Nittany Lions on the drive once again. Facing a third down and about seven from the eight yard line in Temple territory. Gray, the lone setback. Everly on the wing. McQuarrie. Pass overthrown. Everly, the intended receiver. Pretty good coverage downfield that time by Keith Karen, a weak side linebacker, and it's fourth down Penn State. Boy, they threw a flag down there they do have for what down. could be a, a defensive pass interference. And I didn't see a whole lot of contact there. No, there was a little bit of kind of, they're going to call offensive pass interference. I, I didn't see much on the part of Karen that would have justified that. Everly coming out of the backfield. Trying to get to the ball, basically just runs up Karen's back right there. Really a non-issue. It was a third down. If they take the penalty, still be third down, moves them back. May just decline this and be fourth down. We'll see. In a similar situation in the first half, at the end of the first half, Temple elected to take the penalty. Offensive, pass interference. The penalty has been declined. Fourth down. Really kind of a non-issue there because the ball was going to be incomplete either way. So that, that is a tough, tough call. I mean, Eberle's going after the ball. He doesn't flagrantly push Karen out of the way. Right. 
I was surprised when they threw the flag myself, Randy, because it did not look like any kind of pass interference, but in the technical sense, the officials made the call. Fourth down for Penn State. Weary to the end zone. Pass thrown behind Jaredicious and broken up by Alan Jackson. Temple takes over. And the crowd here, the officials in the stands, wanted some pass interference on that play. Well, I, I don't think there was on that play either. McQuarrie throwing the ball to the out here. As he drops back, plants that foot on, on his fifth step. You've got to get this ball farther outside, and you have to throw it a little earlier. If you don't, Jervicius runs, runs out of room. There's no place for him to come back to the ball. It's a timing pattern. When you're late, throwing it disrupts the whole play. So the Temple Owls with the first down at the eight-yard line in Temple territory. Henry Burris from his end zone. Positive yards here to Corey Green for a first down out across the 30. I'll tell you what, it was Anthony Cleary who had a shot at the quarterback in the end zone. And Burris, as we have seen here in the second half, very athletic, makes a 23-yard pass play out of it. We're starting to see Burris' athleticism really come through. He does have a, a shot right here, avoids the sack as he scrambles, keeps his eyes downfield. That's the focus, and Green stays where he is. He's realized he's open, stay where I am, Burris will find me, then turns it into a nice run after the catch. On a delay, Corey Green. This time, Cleary gets his man. A loss of about four. One thing about a lot of these freshmen, they're going to make mistakes, but they're going to make great plays. And now let's take a look at our John Hancock out-of-town scores. Brought to you by John Hancock, official worldwide sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Michigan State out in front of Louisville. Kentucky, perhaps pulling an upset at Indiana. Illinois, Arizona scoreless into the second. Boy, Illinois suffered some tough losses this year thus far. Burris on second and long. Over the top for Kersey. Chino Prater with the coverage for Penn State. And it's third down coming up for Temple. What about the Big Ten? Back to that Illinois. Does that surprise you? Some of the losses they've had 0-2 well, at this point? The uh, I, I guess the margin of loss to Michigan at home on opening weekend was surprising. And also Illinois had that game out in Oregon under control in the third quarter last week and let it slip away. With their defense that is supposed to be the strength of that team, I was surprised Oregon could come back from that kind of deficit in such a short period of time. If Burris completes and converts this third down play here, it'll be Temple's first first down on third. Wide of the mark on the pass play. Burris under pressure from the get-go. Flint Poles had the coverage downfield. One of the one intended of the, for Casey Jones. One of the few times, Wayne, I've seen a back for Temple step up and really make a block on a blitzing linebacker. Gaddy that time stepped up there, really laid a nice block on Penn State's pass rushers as they were coming up the middle and did give Burris a little more time. Unfortunately, the rest of the protection broke down. Burris had to scramble out. It's a good play by Getty that time. Step up there and take on that contact. Cody Carlson shaking up on the play for Penn State. And Corey gets up now and he limps off. They can ill afford to lose any linebackers. That's They've exactly been right. at that position. Well, Enos will be back in the linebacking court <laughs> next week. <laughs> off a 50-plus yard rushing day, they move him back to linebacker. Tell you what, I know who's going to be happy if he does. Chris Everly. Yeah. <laughs> What's the move? Out near the 45. Ed Stranix, the deep snapper, made the stop. A 51-yard punt, but a nice return by Penzenic. And it's first down Penn State, just short of the Nittany Lions, 45. Today's Big Ten football game is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? 
and John Hancock, official sponsor of the 1996 Olympic Games. Aunt Ethel and the whole family are visiting, and you get to play tour guide. Uh-oh, your car's in the shop again, and you need wheels. Headed for a wacky weekend somewhere? Whatever your needs, Budget has the car you need. Budget, a smart place to start. On the road or at home, Budget has you covered. The smart money is on Budget. Today's Man is opening two new superstores, and they want you to be part of the celebration. They've got double savings on suits, sport coats, dress shirts, slacks, sportswear, you name it. All the latest traditional and international collections. Hey, I think I see something for me. I'm out of here. On September 18th, get ready for the ride of your life. Just another die in the Outback. Hogan Outback, coming to Subaru dealers everywhere. Very well defensively here. Jerry Sandusky, got to be happy with that defense. The query on the toss, Enos gets the call again. Let's go back to the studio. Mike Gleason's got an update on Arizona, Illinois. That's right, uh, Wayne. Desert Swarm defense today. Arizona's Teddy Bruschi, 54 and a half tackles for losses going into the year. Sack on Johnny Johnson, still scoreless at the end of three. 20 punts so far today by both teams, Wayne. All right, keep an eye on that Illinois game. For Penn State, second down and short. Enos gets the call. Nice move there. A little hesitation, Randy, in the middle of the line. Picked his hole and then powered through. T. Lang Lloyd made the stop, and it's a first down to the 41-yard line of Temple. Enos showing some patience that you don't always see with young running backs. You commented on the hesitation. Comes to the middle of the line, nothing developing, keeps his poise. Then when he sees the hole, he's got that quickness to get through it. Picks up the first down. Nice run by Enos. Nice composure. You guys are probably wondering out there why Enos was a linebacker up until three weeks ago. We'll tell you in a moment. Good play fake there. Straight ahead dive. And a first down or close to it by Carl Gray. John Swift made the stop on the play. Enos... In addition to being a running back, rushing for over 5,000 yards in high school, as a senior, he made 106 tackles, four and a half sacks, intercepted three passes as a linebacker. Scored 71 touchdowns along with that? Yeah. <laughs> you talk about your two-way player, your two-way dominator. Second and short. Gray breaks one tackle, gets the first down to the 30-yard line of Indiana. Well, we mentioned Richardson who started the ball game. Wally Richardson, 18 to 26, 191 yards, three touchdowns, and this his second start of the season. Got to be happy with the way he played the entire game today. Last week, strong second half, started slow. Today, a good, complete game. So out here, everybody remembers Kerry Collins and the offense that Penn State had last year. I think it's important that if you try and compare Richardson to Collins, and that's a natural comparison, you remember that Richardson is just starting his career. Collins, you try and you remember him towards the end of his career because that was the last time you saw him play. And if you compare the end of Collins and the beginning of Richardson, I think it's an unfair comparison. They feel, the Penn State coaches, Richardson will be every bit as good as Collins. Keep in mind, Richardson is starting early in his career than Collins did. Collins didn't become the starter until the fifth game of his junior season. And right now, Wally Richardson in the second game of his junior season. Jason slowed on the previous carry, gained him about three yards. Second down now. Everly, a little high step action there. Down to the 24-yard line. Robert Kelly, the defensive end, who was injured last week, did not play. West Virginia made the stop there. And the Nittany Lion getting a ride. <laughs> Remember when he used to do the push-ups for every point? Yeah, oh boy. I'll tell you what, he'd be pumping some iron today, wouldn't he? 52 to 14, Penn State. They still do that, I believe, at the uh, Naval Academy. Third down. Rush straight up the middle, McCleary elusive. And then stung back. 
Keith Karen made the stop in the open field along with Tim Terry. Good penetration that time by the Temple front. It looked as though Temple had a chance to get this sack right here. Terry comes around, grabs out, almost has McQuarrie in a firm enough grasp to get the sack, lets him get away. McQuarrie does a nice job at least getting the ball back to where he did, avoiding that negative yardage. Well, he had the first down for a moment, but as he bellied back to get an angle on one of the defenders coming up on him, he lost the first down by about a half yard. So it's fourth down for Penn State. Slowed in motion to the right side. We have whistles holding up the action with 9.32 to go. Timeout taken by Temple. So on an overcast and cool afternoon in Happy Valley, Ron Dickerson's return to this fabled stadium. He was an assistant coach here. He ran a track meet here in high school. He played here as a youngster at Kansas State. And he's coaching here today for Temple. And on the wrong end of that score. Burger King presents the first ever college football top 10 fans poll, where you, the fan, votes for who's number one. For the third straight week, the number one team is Florida State. Go to Burger King and find out how you can make your team number one. Well, look who's here. Herschel Walker and Tony Dorsett, two of the best college football running backs I ever saw. I'll bet you they're swapping some pretty good football stories. Next time, I'm telling you, Tony, right profile. Really, Hersh? I've always favored my left, man. Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Touchdown! You think next time we should wear the helmets? In my case, the helmet is definitely off. When they were small, we had a little sports car. And then they got bigger, so we had to get a four-door. So we leased a new Volkswagen Jetta, $199 a month. Nice, huh? The German-engineered front-wheel drive Jetta comes with rack and pinion steering, daytime running lights, dual airbags. It's a great driving car. It's got a big back seat. And a huge trunk. Wine riders come from Germany. Maybe that's why they like driving so much. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Back at University Park, Beaver Stadium, Penn State. Leading it big, and with a fourth down and short yardage coming up at the Temple 20-yard line. Mike McQuarrie in relief of Wally Richardson at quarterback. Young fan keeping up with the action. The big boy backfield in the game. Oh, that's an illegal procedure here. That'll be more than the play. So this will take him out of a fourth and short yardage. See, Eberle's used to moving when the quarterback calls the game. He's got that defensive instinct still in him. Ten penalties against Penn State, 115 yards. Here this afternoon, if that goes. Now, the new rule could come well, into effect minute, this right. year. Apparently, one of the defenders jumped into the neutral zone, caused movement by an offensive lineman. That's a new rule this year. Yes, it is. And if that happens, they will call it on the defense. Dead ball, encroachment, defense, first down. Charlie Morris jumped into the... Uh... Now, wait a minute, it couldn't have been Charlie Morris. Out of the eye formation, here comes Enos. Knocked down on the play by Robert Kelly. I believe it was Kelly who jumped into the neutral zone earlier. There are, there are several Temple players that that could have been called on as McQuarrie did a nice job varying his pace, emphasizing the first hut, drawing them off sides. I like that rule this year. I think it's a good rule to change to where you don't have to make contact, just coming into the neutral zone when it causes an offensive player to move. Second down coming up, 99 yards on nine carries for Ian. Not a whole lot there. Quick hitter by Gray, the fullback. Penn State will be facing a third down coming up at about two yards to go. T. Lang Lloyd made the stop. Penn State getting a lot of action for their second string offensive line. See a lot of the new faces in there. Put together a nice drive right here. Certainly are. Banging it out. Wearing down that Temple defensive front seven. Boy, 
I tell you, he has excellent vision. A great feel for finding the hole and motoring through it. And it's unusual to see those kinds of skills in such a young runner. He knows exactly where to cut. Looked like he was trying to take that outside, cuts up the middle, yet he's got the strength to break the tackles. He's got the quickness. He comes through, breaks the tackles right there, keeps his legs moving, takes McWilliams all the way down at the goal line to keep him out. Ten carries, 105 yards for Enos. Let's see if they ask him for the clincher. Three, two. Well, he deserved the touchdown. He was the one that carried him down there. Joe obviously felt he deserves it. He earned it. Let's give it to him. Temple all bunched in in the middle. Little outside run right behind his fullback, Gray, who does a nice job of clearing the way for him. He just, just jumped right over the top. Two hands securely around the ball, gets into the end zone. Derringer for the point after. And he's got it through the uprights. 7.48 to go. Penn State has cleared the bench. They extend their advantage. 59 to 14 on the strength of Curtis Enos. It's $5,000 for the baby. I'm embarrassed to take this. You could do something with it. Like what? Go on a cruise. If your mother and I want to do that, we'll do that. I can't pay this back. Pay it back by doing the same thing for your grandchild. Owning my own business. I like that feeling. And it's a great feeling. When it's your business, every day and every dollar has to count. You have your own business. I enjoy it. So consider the American Express corporate card for small business. The card that offers real value, like savings on hotels, car rentals, and UPS overnight shipping. 3% off gasoline at mobile. Even accident disability insurance at no extra cost. To apply, watch your mail for your application or call 1 800 835 MX. The best card to have. I tell you, this is a challenge for <laughs> that Nittany Lion today. 59 push ups. One handed, one paw. Yes. That's oh, right. He's got hey, one paw behind his back. One paw behind his back. He's going to do it, too. Yes, he, uh, oh, the last couple. Show some heart, Lion. <laughs> and he does. He's got 96,000 witnesses if he tries to cheat one. The 59 points scored by Penn State, an all-time high against Temple. Previous high Penn State against Temple was 50-7 to back in 1980. And you've got to mention this aspect of it. Last week, Penn State earned a tight victory over Texas Tech and dropped from fourth to seventh in the polls. Last November, Penn State jumped out to a big lead at Indiana. In the fourth quarter with the game decided, Indiana put together a pretty good run in the fourth quarter, made it look like a ball game. It was not. Penn State, that game, when you look back, may have cost them a national championship. We'll talk about running up the score and what you have to or don't have to do. He dropped to one knee, apparently not. The return by Davis. I thought Davis fielded that on one knee, but apparently the knee did not touch. The, the official on the far side was in the right position to make that call. Brian King, meanwhile, made the tackle downfield. There's the scoring drive by Penn State. Now, Joe Paterno said earlier this week, he does not like this polls business and the fact that you've got to run up the score to move up in the polls. That winning, it, it is not just that you win. It's by how many you win by. Oftentimes, that, that sends the message. And he thinks that's a wrong message to send, running up the score. Davis on the sweep. I think here today, you take a look at Penn State and the three substitutions that they've made here today. They've gotten just about everybody into the ball game. They're not trying necessarily to run up this score. Well, we just saw that last scoring drive. They had 11 plays, zero passes. Yeah. And I, I agree. But nonetheless, they had to win here today big. 
if this was a close game today, Penn State might drop out of the top ten. I agree with you. I think Joe Paterno is not a big fan of the polls to begin with. I think he would, would with last year's results, I think he felt that was a little bit unfair, or at least that it was out of his hands. He didn't do anything and couldn't do anything to control that. Pass is incomplete. Pat Bonner on a quarterback now for Temple. And Frank Carter, the fullback, trapped that uh, pass. There's a look at Joe Paterno, 30th year as head coach. This is where he stands on the all-time victory list. And moving up the list. Yes, indeed. But I think what Paterno has against the polls is, as you said, he doesn't have a choice. The system has put him in a position where this is what he has to do. He doesn't have any other alternative. And this is not what Joe Paterno likes to do. He could not get Nebraska in the postseason. It was impossible because the Big Ten champion of course is locked into the Rose Bowl. Tackle made by Chris Snyder as the protection breaks down. Anthony Cleary was also there. And make no mistake, Joe was loved to go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, it was absolutely. a wonderful experience to represent the Big Ten out there. He just thinks there's a better system than having to run up the score against teams that don't challenge you to the point where they should, just to where you, you have to worry about some pollster sitting out in Arizona. Tenth punt for John Shea. Ben Zinnick on the return. He made the first man miss, and then he paid for it. Ben Zinnick out to the 33, where Penn State will put it in play. First and 10, Shedrick Perry made the stop on the play. 6.16 to go in Happy Valley, and the locals are happy indeed. There are a lot of reasons we created Ford Windstar with so much passenger and cargo room. A lot of reasons we gave Windstar a wide stance for secure handling. And reasons it has standard dual airbags, standard anti-lock brakes, plus the government's highest front crash test rating. We'd be glad to name all the reasons, but you've already named them. Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Oak Tree Health Plan helps families stay healthy with a special focus on children. Oak Tree Care Coordinators are there to assist with social problems that can hinder a child's healthy start. By providing health care with personal attention, Oak Tree Health Plan's making a difference. On September 18th, get ready for the ride of your life. Just another die in the Outback. Hogan Outback, coming to Subaru dealers everywhere. Wayne Larrabee, Randy Wright, final 616 here at University Park, Beaver Stadium. Boy, the students do enjoy their football here, don't they? I'll tell you. There's the third Penn State quarterback of the afternoon, Doug Ostrowski from Fox Chapel High School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Marcus Counts chased him down. First down, Penn State. 23-yard gain, matching the number on his jersey. Everly, again, most of his big runs have been to the outside. He does a wonderful job setting up his blockers, cuts inside, then comes back to the outside, then puts the move, and then uses his acceleration to separate between himself and the defender. Shedrick Perry shaken up on the play. And the middle linebacker is still down. This is a concern that you have to have. When the score here is 59 to 14, you've played a lot of the players the entire game if you're Temple. You've got a rest of the season to play. You don't want anybody getting out there getting hurt. Got a break of the action. 6.08 left to go in this one. Penn State leads by a big margin. Identify yourself. Do you go for the gusto? Go out on a limb? Go full speed ahead? Go where no man has gone before? Or are you a cornflake eater? Guess not. You go for the adrenaline pumping, milk defying taste of Wheaties. Made with wall to wall, indoor, outdoor, toasty, tasty, 100% whole wheat. A whole mouthful of flavor. It's the whole Megillah. So for taste that goes the distance, goes all out. Go for the over the top taste of whole wheat Wheaties. You know, it's going to be a great season. 
You I think? Really, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a great season. I, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a good there's season. There's a lot of question marks. Who's the, the young quarterbacks? Who, are the older guys going to last? I think it's just going to be a really terrific year. But Miami should win it. They say so. Miami has a chance to AFC. win it. Miami has, I'll tell you something. Miami has a chance to win everything. Oh, Super Bowl? Bowl? They got a chance to win it all. That's fact, right. Well, and the Niners repeat. Yes. Can Dallas pick up ground? Yes. Will the AFC have a shot at the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> It's time to save. Mazda clearance days are here. Lease a Mazda 626 LX sedan now. With a list of standard equipment that's anything but standard. Yours right now for just $235 a month with nothing down. Mazda clearance days. Miss this and you can miss the chance to get a Mazda 626 for just $235 a month with zero down. Penn State in the second half has gone to the bench and gone to the bench with some real green freshmen. We'll talk about it in a moment. Ostrowski quarterback. This is Enos once again. John Swift made the stop on the play. Enos is 12th carry of the ball game for better than 110 yards. You get a look at Doug Ostrowski. He never played quarterback till he got here to Penn State. He's a red shirt freshman, a former tight end and defensive end in high school, was a standout on the high school level in Pittsburgh, but was switched to quarterback in the spring. That's a conversion you don't see often. I was is just going to say, you see that switch in the reverse quite a bit. Yep. Quarterbacks going to tight end or some other or position. Or defensive back. Not very much that way, though. Right, he ran for his blocking nicely. I don't know how they can get this kid back to defense. I just don't know. 14 yards on that game. Enos and Eberly, two true freshmen a running back today, have totaled in excess of 200 yards rushing between them in and the got, second half. you got to give credit to the offensive line because the holes are there, but the linemen are giving these backs the line of scrimmage and maybe a few more yards. These backs, as we just saw with Enos right there, are getting those extra yards on their own. How could you ever... Not playing tailback from the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. Unless you really like what you got there, tailback. Double tight end formation. This is Gray. Well, for a big man, he shows some acceleration around the left end. And he's close to the first down. Scott Oster made the stop for Temple. They just keep coming at you. Coming wait. at you and coming at you. Yeah, you know, we talked about Temple and Ron Dickerson, who has done an outstanding job at Temple. I know it doesn't show on the scoreboard today, and it will not show in the win column thus far this season. They'll be 0-3 after today. But as we mentioned before, he has taken this program from way down the ladder and is starting to inch it up. It just sometimes it doesn't show up on the scoreboard as quickly as you'd like it to. Gray brought down that time by Kobe Barnett. And the uh, difference in this ball game, Randy, uh, obviously, there is a difference in, in skill position players. No question about that. But really, the difference is in the trenches in this game. And, and you take a look at a, at a uh, smallish defensive front for this, uh, for this Temple ball club. And if you take a look at a uh, Penn State that has an established big offensive line and vice versa, the same type of thing on the other side. Yes, Temple has a big offensive line, but they've been shuffling due to injuries all year. They're going up against a uh, fairly experienced defensive front for Penn State. It's the last link to building a program is in the trenches. Slowed on the carry. Getting Penn State to within seven yards of the end zone again. Patterson made the stop. Well, that's it, Wayne, it takes longer to build offensive and defensive lines than any other part of your team. I agree with you. There's a difference in the skilled players on these two teams, but that difference isn't near as great as it is in the offensive line. You can go out and recruit a quarterback and put him at defensive back or a defensive back and put him at running back or a, a split receiver. You can recruit speed. It's hard to go out and recruit strength, and it takes a long time for that strength to develop. Sean Dickerson said when he got there, there were only a few players at the bench, 225 pounds. He is for his first St. 
position, same play. Enos has scored on a couple of times today already, running the sweep, going to the outside. Temple over pursues it, leaves a huge gaping hole for him to cut up. And again, he's got that acceleration to when he decides to cut up, does it very quickly and gets through there before Temple can react, close that hole down. Berringer on the point after. And Penn State, 65, make it 66 to 14 over Temple. All right, congratulations all around for that freshman, Curtis Enos. Three second half touchdowns in a starring role. So the Nittany Lions and the Fighting Irish have given us another great college football game. And here are two tired generals looking for each other at midfield. Tough break, Joe. Yeah, I know. The tie's too much. It's nice, but maybe next time something in a crew neck. Uh, how'd you think that'd be too casual? Collect a Burger King Legends of College Football Cup. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Look, Joe, it's not the end of the world. Next cup, think pastels. Introducing the Sony Digital Satellite System with the Signal Seeker LED, the ultimate way to engage in all the movies, sports, and entertainment from USSV and DirecTV. The Sony Digital Satellite System. Lock onto yours at your nearest Sony dealer. Visit your local Sony brand DSS retailer for a demonstration of the power of digital entertainment. This weekend, stop by these stores to join the Maximum Television Tour. Fun, entertainment, prizes, and more. I love shopping at Mealy's. They always have the latest fashions. I found this gorgeous living room set. The salespeople were terrific. Did you see that solid cherry bedroom set? Such great quality. I checked other stores, and Mealy's definitely has the best prices. This place feels great. Between the kids' room, the cafe, and the type of salespeople, Mealy's really has us in mind. This place is awesome. Mealy's Furniture. You'll find it awesome, too. Wayne Larravee, Randy Wright, good to have you with us on a college football afternoon. And now a look at our Ford player of the game, brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And the player of the game, Curtis Enos of Penn State, 14 carries, 132 yards, three touchdowns. All in the second half. Well, I'll tell you what, that's some kind of performance. A 133 on the board. <laughs> a freshman, a true freshman. Well, when he's the third tailback that you've used today, I mean, Archie and Everly, pretty strong production. And they've got another tailback that we didn't see today due to injury, and that, of course, is Stephen Pitts, who's been down with a fractured right foot. Erringer's kick off, a low liner of a kick. Here comes Davis. A spin move by... Danny Davis and Temple will take over just short of its 35. Clint Poles made the stop for Penn State. Number 13, number 19, the numbers on the latest Penn State scoring drive. Just 225, and they did it on the ground. Just a tribute to their offensive line. They've been able to go 67 yards in two and a half minutes with no passing plays. Nothing out of bounds. Nothing to stop the clock. Just big chunks of yardage. Under four minutes to go. Bonner on a deep drop. And Bonner was met with authority near the 39-yard line, a gain of about five yards. Matt Joyner led the charge for Penn State. So Penn State will improve to 2-0, and, oh, and Temple falls to 0-3. Oh Take a look at what the Nittany Lions have coming up at Rutgers next week, and that'll be played in Giant Stadium. And then Wisconsin and Ohio State, that's really the uh, tough stretch of the Big Ten schedule. Purdue, Iowa, Indiana, Northwest, and then Michigan. How about your tough stretch of the schedule to be both games at home? Yeah, not bad. Good scheduling, I'd say. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's a stretch to say that it's a stretch, because it's only two games. Eugene Kelbreth on the carry for a first down for Temple. You look at Pitt State's schedule, they don't play Illinois, as we just saw. They play Wisconsin. Ohio State and Michigan all right here. And other than that, the fact they've got a ton of talent and then they're defending Big Ten champions, 
coincided pretty well with the loss of Kerry Collins, Kijana Carter, and uh, Brady, the tight end, right? <laughs> Not bad timing on that schedule. Not bad timing, especially when you look at their replacements and how they have played. Bonner still has it. Intercepted on the play. Damon Troy made a great break on that pass. You can't, you can't throw the ball late out to the sideline because the timing is destroyed. As Bonner is back here, he's looking downfield, then right at the last minute, throws it out to the sideline. Damon Troy steps right in front of it, makes a nice catch, kept his balance, would have run that ball all the way into the end zone. 2.23 left to go. Now, if, you, if you're Bonner, you're down 66 to 14. You got to try and make something happen. Absolutely. I mean, you're throwing it away, it's kind of hard to, to not try and force something in there. This is the fifth time today that Penn State will have started a drive in Temple territory, and the Nittany Lions need a timeout as they continue to shuffle their personnel into the lineup. Jonas Stasi in there at wide receiver now. Take a look at what's coming up next week on Creative Sports. College football Saturday, Minnesota and Syracuse up at the Carrier Dome. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Some of you may see Miami and Virginia Tech. A lot of you on the East Coast will be watching that game. Jason Stevens is also in the game for Penn State at the fullback spot. We're talking about Joe now reaching down to the fourth and fifth spots on his depth chart. The good thing it's a home game for them. They'd only have 60 or so players if it were an away game. They'd have to leave them in there. Yeah. And it's hard to tell these kids when they get their opportunity to pull back the horns, you know, to, to let up. Well, yeah, you, you don't want to do that. The only thing you can do as a coach is call your basic running plays, take your time, tell your quarterback to take your time in the huddle, let the 25-second clock run down, let your players play. Gray, the fullbacks, stopped by Barnett. Second down upcoming for Penn State. Coming up on two minutes left to go in this one. The nation's longest winning streak stretches to 19 games. Ostrowski at quarterback. Nice run off the right side by Jason Stevens. Marcus counts the stop for Temple. And it'll be third down at about three coming up for Penn State. A little bit less than three. Wayne, I think as Joe Paterno looks back at this game, of all the things that have gone very, very well, basically everything they've tried to do, I think he's, he still has to be most pleased with his defense. That was the biggest question last year. They played very, very well last week. To come out today and shut down a quarterback like Burris and the entire offense, got to be happy with that. Once again, Stevens for a first down and a penalty marker down. That was counts on the tackle, a high tackle attempt, maybe for a face mask penalty here on that play. Looked like a flagrant face mask is going to be called here against Temple. Counts came up. All he could grab onto was a face mask. And he didn't let it go. Looks like he holds on to it as he's coming up here. A high tackle, as you said. Not only does he grab it, but he continues to hold on and never lets it go. Personal foul, mm. face mask, defense. 15 yards from the spot of the run, first down. That's a dangerous, dangerous tackle. Sure he never let Stevens' helmet go. That's what the flagrant 15-yard penalty was, was put in for and designed to stop. And that's a mistake made out of frustration by the defender. Penn State on the move with a minute left to go in the game. Slow to crashing forward. Down to about the 18-yard line. Scott Oster made the stop for Temple. 66 to 14, Penn State. They might have one more play to run here. They let that clock run down. At least the play clock run down. I think one play will be it. Just running simple dives right into the middle of the of the pile. Getting the call on the final play. Boy, he's a fan favorite here. 
as you could tell by the roar from the student section. Listed as a wide receiver, a senior, been on the team four or five years. This former running back. Crowd. He was a running back earlier in his Penn State career, and this one comes to a close. The Penn State Nittany Lions and Joe Paterno talking with his former assistant Ron Dickerson. Nittany Lions go to two and zero. Oh, Temple, zero oh and three, and the Lions. Now, 19 wins in a row for Randy Wright, Wayne Larravee, so long. Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. Number six, Penn State. We finally get to see the Lions as they take on Rutgers tonight. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Gottfried, and welcome to CFA Primetime. And Mike, everybody asked the question. They're ranked number six in the nation, but how good is Penn State? Supposedly, the book is... Maybe not quite as good on offense, but a much improved team on defense. That, to me, means they're a load. Does Rutgers have a real shot in this ballgame tonight? Ron, I think Penn State's a great football team, but Rutgers does have a shot. Where they have a shot is Ray Lucas, their quarterback, really has to have the game of his life, but they have to protect him because Penn State has a good rush up inside with their front four. Willis, Presley, Bataglia, all the skill players have to play a big part in this ballgame. Well, Mike, you mentioned the skill players, the tight end Bataglia and Lucas, the quarterback, and actually is a very special story and let's go down to Mike Adamley with more on that Michael Ron and Mike quarterback Ray Lucas and tight end Marco Battaglia are the core of the Rutgers pass offense and two of the biggest biggest stars but as we watched him play tonight we'll tell you about another story a relationship that extends beyond the playing field two young men one from outside of Newark the other from Queens they are roommates and best friends and the bond between them transcends race and culture and speaks volumes about what is good in college football I'll tell you another thing that's good in college football if you're a player friends and family and there's a lot of Lucas's a lot of Battaglia's here over a hundred strong aunts uncles nieces nephews Marie Battaglia Ellen Lucas they are all here and they are all anticipating the kickoff as much as we are Okay, Michael, we look forward to seeing more of them and hearing more on that, uh, on that outstanding story, the Bataglias and the Lucases. This man, well, 271 wins. The most among active uh, 1A coaches, Joe Paterno. And across the way, Rutgers. Doug Graver, sixth season there with the Scarlet Knights, a record of 26, 30, and 1. In this ball game, Mike Gottfried would be huge for his program if they could come up with this one tonight. They need to win badly in this series, Ron. And to get that win, we talked about Ray Lucas. Offensively, you have to do the unexpected against Penn State. You've got to be able to throw on first down. You've got to be able to let it all hang out in your play calling tonight. You're looking at Willis, number 31. And back there with him is... Chad 